Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. Today we're looking at the Doak U8 DAC and headphone amp. I was doing a little shopping to try to find some items that haven't had too many reviews that I can give you guys information about with the hopes that they'll be good product. And I ran into some awesome luck with the Duke U8. This DAC and headphone amp uses the ESS ES9038 Q2M and it uses two of those chips in parallel, one per channel. It also has Bluetooth 5.0 on board and uses the Qualcomm QCC 5125 chip, which supports Aptex HD as well as LDAC. The build quality on this unit is awesome. You have a solid metal chassis. You do have a little acrylic plate here, but all the way around, great build. Beautiful looking product, great styling. I really love the aluminum little carve outs. Feels great in your hand. In person, it looks and feels high end. On the front, we have an OLED screen. Next to that, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack unbalanced. Under that, a 4.4 millimeter balanced and a balanced four pin XLR. On the back side, we have our inputs and outputs. On the right side, you have your DC in, and this unit comes with a five volt DC power adapter. Above that, you have the power switch. You hold it down for a second to power the unit on, and it also uses a mute button. If you want to mute, you give it a quick tap as well. Next to that, we have our USB-B, optical in, I squared S on HDMI, coaxial in, and the Bluetooth antenna. Pretty interesting to see that I squared S input on a unit costing $280. On the output side, we have our single-ended RCA outs, as well as our balanced XLRs. On top, we have a large rotary encoder, which controls the volume, and if you press down on it, It'll change your inputs. If you press and hold for a second, it'll switch over your filters. And I'll show you that in a sec. We'll plug this unit up with this five volt power supply. Tap on the power button and we'll wait for it to load. It loads pretty darn quick. This is our encoder for volume. We'll go up and down here. We have optical, I squared S, USB, Bluetooth, and coaxial. So I'll jump back to optical. And if we hold down onto the encoders, we will see that the filter shifts down in the bottom section. So you have your seven filters. I see a lot of people on YouTube complaining about the naming schemes of these FIR filters. Those are filters that are baked in by the chip manufacturer and not the DAC manufacturer. So you'll see these names in a lot of DACs with the ESS chips. And these are PCM filters only. You won't have a filter option for DSD files. I tested the Bluetooth. It came up as a Qualcomm ship on my Android phone and I went ahead and renamed it to Duke U8. The connection was easy and fast like any other Bluetooth device. Although even with LDAC, I prefer getting my music from my streamer over to this deck. As for those filters, I found the appetizing filter the smoothest. As you can see on the graph at the top, the impulse response shows a little pre-ringing, then the peak and a little bit of post ringing. And on the magnitude chart, you can see grid extension to around 22 kilohertz where it starts to roll off. My second preferred filter would be the minimum phase slow roll off. On this impulse response, you can see that there's no pre-ringing and you have a little post ringing, but I'm not too concerned about the post ringing as that actually fades off quicker than the peak on the appetizing filter. On the magnitude chart, you do see that it does roll off a little bit quicker at around 18 kilohertz, so it's not as extended on the highs. I would personally consider this filter the most accurate with those transient responses. And the only other filter that I might use would be the brick wall filter. On this one, the impulse response looks pretty similar to the appetizing filter. However, it is a little more dynamic. As for the magnitude graph, you can see past 25 kilohertz, you get quite a dramatic difference where you get that harsher sound. There seems to be a lot of energy right there. And while it's commonly stated that we can't hear anything over 20 kilohertz, we can actually feel some of those frequencies and those higher frequencies do tend to interact with lower frequencies, which becomes less of an issue past 96 kilohertz. The brick wall filter in particular, I wasn't loving it for music, when the music is simple, it's pretty nice, but when it gets dynamic, you get that crunchiness, like too much going on there. So I really do like the brick wall filter more for movies where you will get some big dynamic swings, but when everything's happening at the same time, it does tend to muddy things up. Again, the appetizing, I find it to be the smoothest. I do wish somebody would have made the call and just made it simpler and picked a few filters and left it at that. As for DSD, we don't have to worry about that. These FIR filters only affect PCM files. As for sound quality. I compared the Doak U8 to the SMSL SU1 and I was very pleasantly surprised. If you had the opportunity to see my video comparing the PS100 to the SU1, I had made that comment about removing a veil or wiping that window clean. This unit takes that to another level. Again, very audible difference. I had watched the video where a reviewer said that if you wanted to get better than the SU1, you'd have to jump up to the $400 price range. I think they haven't had a chance to try this unit because at $280,
you get a very substantial upgrade from the SU1. And that's before considering the added value of the headphone amp as well. The first thing I noticed right away was this mid bass bloom. Just a little bit fuller with very nice harmonics. Not in an aggressive way, just in a very smooth way. The low bass is also great, a little extended and well controlled. The mids were super crisp and clear and the positioning of the vocalists right up my alley, just a little bit back from front stage. Not as laid back as the Cambridge 851N, but definitely not as forward as the SU-1. I think it's a great medium in that aspect. The sound stage a little bit wider than the SU-1, as well as a little deeper, but the biggest difference is in the highs, more of that shimmering air. I was listening to Northern Lights by Fetty Wap, and the vocals were just super clear and crisp. You could just visualize the person in front of you and you can etch out where exactly they're standing. Very remarkable for its price point. I listened to Rhodes by Portishead. Everything had its own place in space. Again, those highs were shimmering with a lot of air. So as for this unit as a DAC, if you're willing to spend a little more than what you get the SU8 for, you should definitely highly consider looking at this one. You can find it on Amazon. Just give it a shot. It's the best advice I can give you. Order it, try it. If you don't like the sound signature, send it back. But it is very reminiscent of that SMSL sound. Just not so aggressive in your face, a little bit airier and definitely smoother. And then there's a the headphone amp. I'm not a big headphone user. I only own a couple pairs. I tested the headphone amp with a pair of Status Audio CB1s and with my earbuds, which are the Shure SE 215 Pros. This unit has wonderful clarity, resolution. I wouldn't say a ton of bass authority. The bass isn't overpowering. I was listening at a volume at around 50, where at 70 is about the maximum I was comfortable with. And you still had enough power to crank it up a little bit if you like a lot of output. The headphone amp outputs 150 milliwatts. And I tested this unit connected to my PC via USB cable, which allowed me to test DSD as well. First, I tested the unit with the PC title app and everything sounded great in FLAC. Then I opened up Audiovana to test out the DSD. I actually only own one DSD album and that's a Gabriel Mervine album from Octave Records. That download comes with the DSD files as well as the high res files. And going back and forth, I'll tell you, that this DAC with that DSD is another level. It's amazing the amount of detail you can get. Switching back from the 24-bit 192 kilohertz file and the DSD file, beautiful improvement with the DSD. You get this extra level of realism that really pops out. Not so much in the soundstage and imaging. The instruments sound more organic, more real. The vocals, not crisper, but just more real. Very pleasant surprise. Great job on the DSD. Unfortunately, I don't think that's something I want to invest in myself. But if you have a big DSD collection, most likely you already have a great DAC, but this might be a great option for a second DAC for an office or something to travel with. One option I do wish the U8 had would be a dimmer on the ODET screen. I really do prefer to have the screen off when I'm watching movies. I don't mind it when the music's playing, but at nighttime for TV watching, it's a little much. The U8 also comes with a remote control, super flimsy. I don't think this thing will last a few months, but it does what you want it to do. You have volume up and down, the left and right changes your inputs, and this menu button changes your filters. I use this DAC with my preamp, so I leave it at 100% and use my own preamp control. It would be very cool if Doak or some of these other manufacturers would just give you the IR codes for the remote controls and maybe upload that information to a Sofa Baton or one of the higher end remote controls. Or offer a more premium one for $20, $30. I'd definitely pay for a nice aluminum remote control if I were using this as a preamp as well. So my final thoughts, the Doak U8 DAC and headphone amp is an awesome buy for what you get. $280 gets you a solid piece of equipment with excellent sound. I highly recommend it guys. I'll post an Amazon link below so you can take a look at it. Maybe they'll have a special this Christmas. So now I have a couple of sample tracks for you. The first track is going to be the SU-1 followed up by the Doke U8. I would suggest you use headphones and listen for that xylophone. That's where you can catch those really quick transients and you can hear the slight phase differences. I'll see you on the next one. I live inside my own world of make-believe Kids screaming in the cradles profanities I see the water ice covered in pink and bleach Cross out the ones who hit my cars and watch me weep I love everything Fire spreading all around my room My world's so bright It's hard to breathe, but that's alright Hush! Take my eyes open to force reality. No, no, no. 
just tripping on day. Dreams got dirty, little lullabies playing on repeat. Might as well just ride around the nursery and count sheep.